In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize forecasts in your line charts in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So forecasts are a great way to visualize the trajectory of your data points in the upcoming future. If you didn't know already, you can auto-generate forecasts in Power BI itself or maybe you can get forecasts from the business itself. In this video, we're just gonna focus on the forecasts that have been given to us by the business. However, if you're interested in learning how to create and generate your own forecasts in Power BI, I have it covered in a separate video. So check it out if you haven't yet. So here's an example data set that I created. It contains two tables. One, this table here is the sales and we have sales in the last 14 months, so it's from uh, Feb 2022 to Jan of last year. And each month just sort of signifies the sales that have been uh, made in those months. We also have another table here, the forecasts, which shows forecasted values of sales for the current year, 2022. And this is typically what is given to you by the business. And our goal at this time is to visualize the current sales and forecast in the same line chart series. So what you'll observe straight away is that we have two tables with two date columns. Now we need to put them both in the same chart. So we need to put them in the same line series. So to do that, we're just gonna try to drag, let's say the date and the forecast and simply just convert that into a line chart. And great, that works. However, you'll notice if you try to drag in sales, you will get the same value for every single data point here. And that's because there's no relationship between the sales and their dates to the forecasts and the dates. So what we need to do is to create a sort of joining table that combines both those two date columns into one. And here's where we will start to create a calendar table. So to create this calendar table, we're gonna go to modeling and click new table. So here I'm just going to paste a DAX code that I've created in a previous video. But what it does is it essentially just creates us a DAX table that uh, just generates us a number of values from a certain date to a certain year uh, that we can use to unify and combine both the sales and forecast in the same axis. So now that we've created that calendar table, we're going to use that to connect both these two up. So we're just gonna simply drag in the dates here from the forecast as well. And now what you'll notice if we instead of using the dates from the forecast table in our line chart here we're going to use the dates you'll see that they are now overlaid on top of each other so now let's delete these two tables and let's visualize this chart as a table and let me show you where the problem is so if you look at the chart here you'll see that we will have some overlaps and that's because we have some days some months where we've had sales so both January and February of this year have forecasts sales, but they also have actual sales. So what we want to do is we want to sort of combine them into one and to essentially show the actual sales when there is actual sales as opposed to forecasts. So we can kind of overlay that there are actual sales on those dates and visualize forecasts the same way if there are no sales yet. So let's try to do that here. So I'm just gonna create a new measure here. I'm gonna name it sales and forecasts. And I'm gonna create an if statement here saying if, simply if the sales is not blank, so here we're gonna use the max of sales. If it's not blank, 
you should use the sales. Otherwise, use the forecast. If we hit enter there and bring it across in this table here, you will see exactly what it does. So you'll notice here where we have overlaps uh, on either January and February 2022, there are both sales and forecasts. But this measure ensures that if there is sales entry for those months, we take the sales value as opposed to forecast sales. And we also what we do is if there is no sales value, so let's say this an empty value here, we fill it in with the forecast value itself, making sure that we have one column or at least one measure that we can use in our line charts that gives us a value regardless if there is no sales or there are no forecasts. So let's fix this line charts that we have created here. So we're going to remove these forecasts. So we're just going to show the sales and we're going to use that measure and put this on top here. So what it does now is it shows us the sales and the forecasts, which is showing here on the blue line. So you'll notice that we added two values in our line charts that doesn't overlap anymore like before. And that's because obviously we've created this logic where if there is a forecast, we use the forecast, but if there's sales, we use sales. That's how it sort of creates this illusion that we have one line chart showing the actual sales and forecast following up to it. So from here, we now just need to play around with the shapes a little bit. Um, so we, if we go to the formatting pane here and we just change the shapes to maybe show the markers or if we go to, let's say the data colors, we want to show the sales and forecast to be gray to signify that it's a forecast value, maybe just a little bit lighter, too light maybe, something like this. Under shapes, you also have the ability to customize individual series. And this is the reason why we had it separated as a separate value so that we can customize the forecasts by itself and change what the line style is. So we might want to show it as a dash, for example, just to show that it is what we have forecasted it to be. And it gives us that, you know, really nice effect that we are showing the sales, which is on the left, the blue line, and we have the forecasted values on the gray dotted line following up on that sales. And by the way, if we go back to the field section here, it's really important that you keep the forecasts on top of the sales value, because if you do it the opposite way around, you'll notice that obviously the sales and forecast will be on top of the sales, uh, which will show up here. You can see that it's dotted line. So we just need to make sure that it is ordered this way. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create a forecast line chart in Power BI while giving the illusion of having them in the same line series. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.